Good afternoon. So I'm going to throw something at you just to <laughs> keep you on your toes, which is dating is a minefield. And I'm going to explain what I mean about that with politics, religion, what sort of phone you use. Um, give me some perspective on this and also some suggestions because you might find yourself a bit of a quandary about this. Before I do all that, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and why I do these talks. And I'd uh, love to have your input along the way. Um, this is my Facebook Live, by the way, in case you haven't seen this before. And it'll go to YouTube later on. So if you're watching me live, you can interact and otherwise in the comments afterwards. So hi, my name is Barry Selby. Welcome to my broadcast. I am an inspirational speaker, relationship and love expert, and I help women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also an author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples I highly recommend because I wrote it. Um, and I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine because that's what I'm about and that's what informs my work with women. And also what inspired these talks almost three years ago now called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring a Feminine Heart. And so today we're episode number 800 and 847. So I lost track for a second there. My mind just did a, just did a dyslexic flip there in my head. 847. And the topic today is about the challenge of dating being a minefield because of all the things people have as their beliefs that basically make you like them or opposed to them. So I threw three out there just to start with, which is religion, politics, and the iPhone Android debate. <laughs> Let me start with the easy one, which is the iPhone Android debate. Um, and you may have this quandary yourself where you've been in a relationship with somebody where their phone is not the same, um, what's the word? Um, not biosphere, wrong word. There's a, there's a term basically, uh, I'll come back to you in a second, the operating system environment that you're in. And because iPhones and Androids, for example, don't really talk to each other in their personalized, unique specialities, that you find yourself being in a place where sometimes you wonder if it's going to work or not. I mean, for example, I'm an iPhone user, have been since they first came out. I got one back in 2007. And being an, being an Apple user since the mid 80s, I'm very aligned to that. I've, I'm very loyal to that, t that uh, setup, even though some of the features on the Android, Android have outdistanced the iPhone until the very recent ones just came out. But the thing is, within the iPhone community, and I have lots of friends who have iPhones, there's certain features that you just can't do outside of that. And so, for example, things like FaceTime, iMessage, um, AirPlay, all those different things we have with the iPhone. What, a, the word come back to me in a second, the environment. <laughs> the cynical word not come back. So if you have an Android, you're outside that loop. And then also with the people within the Android community, with Google, there's lots of features they have which the iPhones don't have. In dating, which is what this is all about, there can be some distance is a nice way to put it in between what people can have and what they like now i'm going to hit the deep, deeper ones in a moment because this is just a warming up so having a different phone technology can be a make or break in your relationship choices it may even be a red flag where you won't date anybody who's got the opposite phone type than you have maybe I'm not saying you do but you may be but let's go into the bigger ones right now which is politics and religion because they're the really they're the big bugaboos they're the big demons um especially right now with the religious ones. Oh, sorry, with the, with, the, <laughs> with the political ones. So if politics is part of your conversation, part of your makeup, part of your philosophy, can you date somebody who's on the, who's, who's on the other side of the aisle, so to speak, of the conversation? It doesn't matter what country you're in. Most, most political systems, strangely enough, seem to have basically a two-party system, which is left and right, literally left and right in the sense of their terminology. If you're in one of those groups, can you date somebody who's on the opposite side of the aisle? The question about that has another layer to it because yes, you can have opposing views, but you can still communicate, at least I hope you can. So it's possible, I believe, if you are in one camp, you can meet somebody in the other camp and you can actually find yourself getting together, having a great time and having an actual conversation. When you are not too invested and attached, because this is one of the, pro the problems with the political and religious teachings, is when you're so adamant that nobody matters to you unless they're of the same allegiance as you are, meaning whether it's politics or religion, there's going to be a problem in your dating life. In fact, you won't be able to communicate with people. I, I, I grew up in a way with that because I come from a Jewish background. As I mentioned in my talks before, I grew up Jewish in my family, and I sort of had my own spiritual crisis in my teen years. I went through it very early. But most of the people I was around were Church of England or Catholic. Actually, Church of England Christian or Catholic, excuse me. Catholic was the minority amongst the people I was around. 
And there's also a few um, Hindus and Muslims as well because there was a lot of influx in the part of London I lived in. But it made for an interesting conversation because there were certain rules that some religious teachings had that didn't fit other people's teachings. In fact, my brother, sorry Ian to out you on this one, his first marriage, which didn't last that long, he married someone who was Church of England. She was Church of England, he was Jewish. And it caused a whole rift in our family because there was such an attachment in my um, parents and grand and parents, grandparents and uncles and aunts generation where having somebody from outside the religion being the family was taboo. Now it wasn't said that way, but the actions against that and the things that were said, I remember clearly when my brother was getting married and one of my uncles, I think it was one of my uncles, said about, you know, it wasn't going to go, it wasn't going to the marriage because it wasn't going to be in a, in a temple, it was, going to, it was going to be a synagogue, it was going to be in a church. And I said, frankly, he's like, he could get married in a, a laundromat as far as I'm concerned. I have no problem with that because I'm on the same page as my brother on this one. But that sort of rift in the family dynamic is an indication of where there's such a, a split over religious values. So whether it is the level of the phone differences or it's something bigger like religion or politics, what I'm attempting to say here is it is a challenging thing to do in the dating arena where you don't know what somebody's views are. I mean, most of the dating apps out there now, as well as the dating sites, have a place for religious, um, religion and spirituality choice so you can put in there what you believe or don't believe. There also have things like whether you drink or not, whether you do drugs and whether you smoke. Interesting, they're all in the same box. But the thing about it is it comes back to is, what do you really want? Because you can say sometimes that love is blind and the heart knows best, which I've talked about a few times myself, where you say, you know what, I'm going to fall in love with somebody, it doesn't matter what their preferences are. You'll go beyond that. Now, as a spiritual um, quest, perhaps, to find the love with somebody who has totally opposing views to what you have, where you don't drink and they do, where they're right wing and you're left wing, where this and that are all different, that's an interesting opportunity. Maybe not recommended. At the same time, if you're only going to date somebody who fits in a very finite, limited possibility of what you believe is right for you, so they've got to be matching religious views, matching spiritual, um, politi political views, and have the same phone, te the phone technology, and they also have the same drinking habits and everything else, all those things are the same, that can be a lot easier, but it also can be very confining. And what I'm attempting to say is I'm putting, I'm putting an idea through that's in the middle. It's in, uh, <laughs> of course it is. As I was saying about politics, how there's generally most countries have a two-party system, left and right wing. Although some countries, even England, for example, they have actually three, four different parties outside of those main two that are in between that. Right now in Israel, that's going on because of what happened with the election. They've given the, the leader, I'm using that term loosely, for Netanyahu, has got to create a, a, um, a coalition government to create a majority because on his own he's not strong enough. So there are other parties involved in that. So what I'm attempting to say is that depending on which country, because this country in America, there's only a couple of other very, very small outside parties outside the main two. What I'm saying though is that finding middle ground in the middle of the aisle between left and right may be a place to be when you're looking at relationships. As I said, it's possible to have an, an open conversation if you're both open to discussing without being blindly allegiant to each party so you can talk about things. There are, there are certainly so many families that have had rifts where the children have gone the opposite um, polarity of political view to their parents out of aversion as in opposite, like want to walk away versus actual loyalty to something new. So there's all sorts of things that can come up in the conversation about what is really the differences. For me, religion and politics and iPhone choices are things that are at one point, at one level, inconvenient. And yes, they can be deal breakers. And I'm going to talk about that more in a moment about the, the green flag, red, green flag, red flag syndrome or, sin, or symptoms and keys. But having a place where you get to the point where you're absolutely um, gutted because somebody's views uh, regarding religion or politics or phones is so opposing to yours you can't get along with them, is that really working for you? So now we cut to now we cut to jump into the whole right red flag, green flag piece. So hi Sarah, and I see my broadcast. So in in choosing your your partnerships and relationships, there's definitely certain things which are going to be your red flags massively. So for example, loyalty. If you have a thing where you 
are loyal to monogamy and you don't want your partner cheating on you, that can be a deal breaker if that, does, if that happens. Whereas you could be in a place where you're, like, where you're in a place where polyamory is normal and that works for you too. Knowing what is true for you and what you want in your partnership is important. That's where your green flags and red flags show up. Meaning green flags are where you definitely have to have things. Red flags are where you definitely don't want to have things. And it's in between as well. I don't know what color you have, but it's in between color. Where it's okay either way. But having clarity about what you want, absolutely what you want, as well as having clarity of what you do not um, choose in a relationship is vital to have a healthy choice. Because otherwise, as I said in the title, it is a minefield. Dating is challenging. If you don't know what you're looking for, and then when you meet somebody, they start telling you stuff and you're going, do I want this or not? When it's better, I think, to know ahead of time. What is important to me in that one relationship? Like for me personally, some things that are important to me is I want someone who's on a spiritual path outside of a religious teaching because I'm outside of religious teaching. I'd rather be more inclusive of what's available. So that's one of the things that's high on my list. Secondly, another part of that conversation is to really get clear that I want someone who's on their own journey, that's growing, that's learning, that is a student of life. Because I've been that for 30 plus years now. And if I'm with somebody who thinks life is the way it is and they're not going to choose anything, we're going to have some interesting conversations that may not go the way they want. In fact, they may become a client, <laughs> to be honest. So that doesn't work either. But also I'm very clear for myself, and this is one of my personal ones, about because I talk about the phone stuff in the title, is it really is challenging to go up with somebody who's got an Android phone because I'm an iPhone user. And it sounds simplistic, but it, it really is one of those things that is important to me. Because there's things you can do with the iPhones where the, where the interface with another iPhone is so much easier to work with. It's convenient, it's comfortable, and it works. And for me, that's a, that's a green flag. It's not a wishy-washy thing. I want that in my partnership. And it sounds simplistic, but it's true. So you need to get clear for yourself. I mean, I'm putting it simply, but really you need, to, you need for yourself, if you're dating and you're single at the moment, if you're in a relationship, this is past that point. But what is it you really want? What are your green flags that you must have? And also, what are your red flags that you don't have, that you really don't want to have? Get clear on those. And ideally, well, I say ideally, you probably wouldn't have more than maybe five to 10 of each. Because if you've got 150 of each ones, you may be a little bit too refined in making dating really challenging for you. But if you've got a list of five and 10 red flags and five or 10 green flags, then it gives you some clarity and direction of what lines up for you, where you want to go. So having an understanding of what those choices are can make your life much more, sorry, to make your dating life much more enjoyable and less of a minefield. So having an understanding of this sounds so simple. And Hida, and I see you in my broadcast, thank you for being with me. Being clear about what you really want and knowing what it is that's important to you is fundamental when you go on dates. Now, oh, there's another one. <laughs> Let me throw this one on the table too, just to play with it is I, I, have, I, I was in a relationship with a couple of women at different times who were, who were vegetarians. They weren't vegans, they were vegetarians, and I'm not vegetarian. And so that can be another one of those things. Is it a green flag or red flag for you? Are you strict about your diet, where being with somebody who's not strict about their diet doesn't work for you? If that's true, that's a red flag. Well, red flag if you, it actually if it's in either one of the camps. But I'm saying, get clear about those, those lists of what's really important to you. If it is politics, if it is religion, if it is phone type, if it is food type, know what those things are for your choices. So when you go on dates, you know ahead of time what you're walking in with. And you can find out early on if that partner if you're meeting, if you're really attracted to them because of the way they look, but their choices don't fit what you really want. And this is the challenge. Sometimes we're going to overlook these things and go straight and go, I'm going to be in a relationship no matter what because they're so hot. But I guarantee you, as time goes by, their hotness will fade and their issues those red flags you ignored will show up. That's what I'm saying, up front. It's a much better choice to go in clear-headed with a clear vision of what you want. If they're hot, even better. But if they're not hot, no, actually, that's, that's not gonna work. You want, you, <laughs> you're probably gonna take somebody who is hot, ideally, so. But understanding that the, the, what goes with that is that they've gotta be green flags. Don't let your libido override your heart's choice. Just be clear about that. So having to understand that clarity, for me, is a vital part of the work I do with my clients because I want to help them get clear what they want. You know, one of my, one of my online courses called Attract the Man You Want, the first couple of elements, is eight, eight modules, but the first couple of elements are very clear about what is it you don't want and what is it you do want. Then how do you make that real so you can actually embody, embrace that and attract that into your life? So it starts with that. Having understanding of what you really want 
and having an understanding of what doesn't work for you are cornerstones for healthy dating. I mean, being simple about it. So if you're not sure what that is, I can help you. <laughs> if you are sure what it is, good, keep going with it. But if you're having challenges in the dating arena, that, that course, actually I'll put, I'll put some links in the comments that I invite you to check out. They're, they're course to action invitations. One of which is, I'll put the Track the Man You Want course in there for the ladies. It's an online course you can take to really focus on and create your vision and attraction for what you want in a relationship. That's available with or without coaching, it's your choice. And also I'm gonna put in the comments, uh, in the comments a link to have a chat with me. Because if, it, if this is stirring up challenges for you, or it's stirring up concerns and not sure how to deal with it, we should have a chat. In fact, you go to barrysurvey.com forward slash chat, and I'll put the link in the comments. You can sign up for a complimentary chat with me as a gift, and we can talk about what's going on for you and where you want to go to have a healthy relationship. Um, I did mention my books. I'll put that in there as well, because it, I said it's a good book. I wrote it. <laughs> so I'll put a link in there as well. So those three will be in the comments. So just to, you know, verbally, in case you don't want to wait till I write them in later on, um, online course attract the man you want is barrysilvey.com forward slash ATM M as in mother um, second is the chat with me which is barrysilvey.com forward slash chat and my book is barrysilvey.com forward slash book make it easy for you the links will be in the comments afterwards and I hope this has made some sense to you if you have any questions about this please put them below and respond when I sign off replays if you haven't seen my broadcast before this is my daily Facebook live right here on my personal page on Facebook which is Barry Selby hope you join me at 5pm Pacific time every day of the week 7 days a week um, the replays go to my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby to author. Please like my page. I've noticed though that they seem to be dropping off over a period of time. So I'm only getting the, f the last 300 or so. Before that, they seem to be gone. However, thankfully, because I learned early on, I saved them to my computer and then put them onto YouTube. So if you go to my YouTube channel, which is also Barry Selby, or my name is, all my social media is Barry Selby, there's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine. You can subscribe to my channel and watch any of them there. And all 840 plus are there, so you can watch any ones you want. Um, I'm passionate about this topic, as you may have guessed. I talk about it a lot of the times and I help my clients get what they want in love, life, and everywhere else. If you want help in this, reach out. Don't try to keep doing this yourself if it's not working. And if it's rocking for you, keep going. So with that, I thank you for watching. I appreciate you being with me. This is my daily chat, as I mentioned, every day, 5 p.m. right here on my channel. If you want to get some questions answered, if you want, actually want to find out more, message me. If you have things you want me to talk about, and I'll bring that up with my next topic. So I thank you for watching. I will see you again tomorrow. Take care of yourself and uh, have a good weekend. I'll see you soon. Bye.